Hi Grady, welcome back to Science at the British Online School. Today we're going to be starting our new topic on the periodic table. In this topic we'll be looking at the periodic table, its history, the people involved in creating the periodic table, how it was constructed as a way of making sense of the elements, of organising them in terms of their chemical and their physical properties, and how that allowed us to improve our understanding as scientists of the ways that substances react. For today's starter task, I'd like you to watch this short video, which is an animation that features the original Elements song. This song was created in the 1950s, and it includes all the elements that were known at that time. While you're watching this video, I'd like you to think and be ready to share afterwards. Can you define, from your previous knowledge in science, can you define the word element? How do elements differ from compounds? And can you tell me how many different elements you think you heard in the video? There are quite a few and they go quite fast, so you might want to listen to it more than once. So now that we've familiarised ourselves with the names of the elements, it's time for us to have a look at today's learning objectives. First of all, we're going to be reflecting back on previous lessons this year and in year seven, understanding our knowledge of the elements. We'll be familiarising ourselves with the names of the elements, using the periodic table to look those up, and also the symbols that correspond to each of the names. And then finally, we'll be looking at the principles behind Mendeleev's periodic table, a little bit about who Mendeleev was and why his work was so fundamental to the construction of the modern periodic table as we know it. From our previous work in science, we should know that all matter can be classified as a pure substance or as a mixture. We're going to be focusing on pure substances in this lesson because we are going to be looking at elements. If we look at the flow diagram here of all matter, pure substances can be divided into elements and compounds, and elements, by their definition, are substances that are made up of only one type of atom. The atom can be in single atoms like we see here in this representation, or they can be in little pairs or more atoms joined together. But the key point is that as a pure substance, they are made up of only one type of atom. This is the periodic table. It's likely that you've seen many periodic tables before, both in our science lessons and they're often represented in different books and places that you might have been researching science online. This periodic table is one of my favourite ones to use when we're studying chemistry in our science lessons, because when you follow the link that's here on our lesson PowerPoint, it will take you to the Royal Society of Chemistry's interactive periodic table, which I'm going to open for us now. This interactive periodic table is a great way to start to learn about the elements and their relationships to one another and what we mean by the order of the elements in the ways that they are lined up in periods and groups. As this periodic table is interactive, when you hover over any of the elements in this periodic table, it tells you their name and some further information about the elements. To get even more detailed information about the physical and chemical properties, if you click on the individual element symbols, they will bring up lots of information. A lot of this is well beyond the scope of our course in Key Stage 3, but we'll use it when we move into GCSE and A-levels. Another great feature of this interactive periodic table is that you can use it to classify and to find different categories of information, such as metals or non-metals or individual groups, which we're going to study in a later lesson in this topic. Also in this interactive periodic table, there's a feature that allows us to see the different states of matter of each of the elements at any temperature. And um, this relates back to our work on states of matter in an earlier topic. There's also a nice feature where you click visual elements images, and it shows you some visual representations of the elements and some further facts about each of the elements. Task one today is the element treasure hunt. You should use the RSC's interactive periodic table. The link is given on the worksheet and also on our lesson PowerPoint that I've just shown you how to use. You should then write your answers to each of the sections in the space provided and be ready to share them with the class afterwards. There are six parts to task one. The first one, elements I have heard of. Everyone's answers will be different for this. There's no right or wrong answers. Just have a look through the periodic table and select three elements that you know that you had heard of before today. 
You then need to look for elements which you think are named after planets. This will link back to your previous knowledge of physics in the solar system. Then look for any elements that you think might be named after people. Some of these people may be famous scientists, some who you've heard of, or you may need to look and see if there are some others that sound like they're the names of people. And we can discuss who they are at the end. Then have a look at elements that might be named after places. That may be after people, it may be after countries, it may be after cities. Um, elements with a symbol that doesn't match their name is a really important one. We'll talk about why when we're going over the answers to this, but many of the elements have a symbol that relates to alternative names for those elements. So I want you to spot those ones and we'll discuss them together and have a look at their origins. And then finally, I'd like you to find group one and list three elements, any three elements that come from that group. Take some time now to complete your worksheet and be ready to share. The history of the periodic table is really interesting. Throughout the 1800s, a large number of elements were discovered and added to the ones that had been known from earlier times. A number of scientists worked on trying to make sense of the patterns and observations that they made of the chemical and physical properties of these elements. One of those scientists was Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist. He wrote chemistry books and was looking for different ways to organise the currently known elements at that time. And he published his first periodic table of the elements in 1869. The thing that set Mendeleev apart from other scientists who were working on similar theories with the periodic table was that he had the confidence in his knowledge to spot that not all the elements had yet been discovered. He arranged the elements in order of their increasing atomic masses. And when he saw that list, he looked at them and looked at their chemical and physical properties and began to spot patterns or repetitions. He then found a way of organizing and lining up the elements still in order of increasing atomic mass but he also took into account the properties and lined them up vertically according to those properties. Whenever he discovered that they weren't lining up with matching properties, he would leave gaps. And he proposed that those gaps related to elements which had yet to be discovered. He left his periodic table with these gaps in them. And subsequently, when these elements were discovered, it was found that they fitted into the property gaps that he had predicted. The work of Mendeleev and other chemists of the time, such as Newlands, led to what we now recognise as the modern periodic table. In this modern periodic table, we have rows across the way, which are known as periods, and the rows across the way are given in order of increasing atomic number. When we get to the end of a row, we go down to the next line, just like written English, and increasing in number across the page again. Elements up and down the way are known as in groups. These are the vertical columns up and down the page. And elements which appear in the same group tend to have similar chemical properties. For task two today, I'd like you to return to your worksheet and use the RSC interactive periodic table again. You should write your answers in the spaces provided and be ready to share. The questions that are given on the worksheet Test your knowledge of using the periodic table to convert between symbols and names for the elements. They will challenge you to find positions of elements relative to other elements and also to find some of the elements which have symbols that do not match up with their name. You are also asked to look at how many elements are listed on this periodic table and we'll discuss that when we share our answers as to whether this is a fixed number or a number that we think may change. And then finally, you should finish up task two by writing down your clear definition of an element. To finish up today's lesson, I wanted to share with you a really fun name generator that I've used a lot of times to make posters for my lab um, and also for my home learning uh, classroom. This one here has got an example with my name and I'm going to show you how to do one of these for yourself. You can use it on your science book or just to have at your desk. This is the myfunstudio.com periodic table writer, and it's really easy to use, and I'm just going to show you how. When you scroll down the page, you'll see the part here where you can enter your text. You can type in your name or any text that you'd like to generate as periodic table element symbols. Once you've done that, you can choose your preferred colour scheme from the list here, and then you can also choose a font, 
and choose what you want it to show. It might show atomic number, names, atomic weights, and there's an option for electrons. You can then download this as a PDF or PNG file. The file that's generated looks like this, and you can just save that to your own computer and either use it digitally or you can print that out as well. For those of you looking for a bit of extra challenge this lesson, you can explore this TED-Ed lesson all about the genius of Mendeleev's periodic table. As with all TED-Ed lessons, you can watch the video, you're then able to think and answer the multiple choice questions based on the knowledge you've learned. You can dig deeper and look into more detail about the topic and you can discuss and post your ideas on there. So in summary, in today's lesson, lesson one from the periodic table topic, we have looked at our prior knowledge of elements, reminded ourselves of the definition of an element as a pure substance made of only one type of atom. We've used the RSC's interactive periodic table to familiarise ourselves with the names of many elements and also their symbols and discussed in class how those symbols came to be, some of them matching up with the names and some of them with alternative roots. We then looked at the principles behind Mendeleev's periodic table and the history of how he was able to construct this with the knowledge from the time. We looked at how Mendeleev's periodic table linked into the modern periodic table that we know today and use throughout chemistry and science.